One of the keys to maintaining quality grasslands is the use of fire. Fire can be a big help when you use it under the right conditions. It takes planning ahead, knowing the hazards, using the right tools, and learning how to control a burn. If you have any questions after watching this video, contact your local conservation department or Natural Resource Conservation Service representative. Remember that you are legally responsible for any damage that results from your burn, whether it's damage from the fire or from the smoke. So when you consider an area to be burned, consider the important site features. Know where fences, gates, and power lines are. Burning near power lines can be very dangerous for a number of reasons. The chemically treated poles burn intensely once they start. They're hard to extinguish, and spraying water on high voltage lines can be very dangerous. Another hazard near power lines is that the carbon in smoke conducts electricity. If the carbon is dense enough, electricity may discharge from the power line to the ground. This can kill people. Identify any wet areas which could interfere with equipment necessary to control the burn. Also identify water sources to refill sprayers or serve as natural fire breaks. Note roads and other access routes, property boundaries, houses, and other buildings. Remember that smoke can create real danger if it blows across a road and blinds drivers to oncoming traffic. Smoke can damage the contents of homes and other buildings. The fire's behavior can be affected by wind breaks and woods. The flow of air along valleys and trails is also important. After you've identified important features, mark where you need to create fire breaks to contain the burn. They should be one and a half times as wide as the vegetation is tall which usually means about four to six feet wide. Fire breaks provide safe starting lines for your burns. You can create fire breaks in several ways. If you want to be sure there's a solid unburnable edge, you can plow or disc border lines. Of course, that's only useful where erosion isn't a problem. If it's an area that becomes wet, work the ground when it's frozen or at its driest. Don't wait until burning time to prepare plowed or disced lines. You can create a green line or a grass fire break by keeping a cool season grass border mowed or grazed. Burned fire breaks are another choice usually made in conjunction with mowed or disc lines. They're prepared by lighting short lengths of vegetation along the area that needs a fire break. Let the fire burn five to 10 feet away from the line before you put it out. Repeat this until you've covered the entire length of the fire break. If you've prepared a fire break several weeks ahead, be sure it's still free of fuel before you start your prescribed fire. Fuels too wet to burn earlier may be dry enough to carry a fire across later. It's essential that all tools be in good working order. That way you can count on them during the burn. You'll need several hand tools to help control the fire. These include rakes, swatters, wet sacks, backpack or leaf blowers, and garden or backpack sprayers. Agricultural or livestock sprayers with a hand gun nozzle, 125 PSI, and six gallons of water per minute output will put the water where it's needed. They're used for laying wet lines and putting out spot overs. Higher pressure sprayers will also work, but don't go overboard in the gallons of water you spray. You may need that water later to put out a spot over or to control an escape. Backpack blowers are used to clear fire breaks to bare ground and to put out backfires and flank fires. To ignite the fire and maintain even fire lines, use drip torches or bow rakes. Light the drip torch by pouring a small amount of fuel on the ground and lighting the spot first. Flares will also start fires, though not with the same control. When you plan for equipment, you also have to consider the right type of clothing. Natural fibers like cotton and wool or fire-resistant material like Nomex should cover your body, arms, and legs. A natural fiber hat should cover your head. Avoid synthetic fabrics because they melt easily and can cause severe burns. Leather gloves and high-top leather boots are essential. Anyone operating a backpack blower should wear goggles and hearing protectors. Goggles and hard hats give good protection if you burn near trees and brush. Once you're equipped and you know the area to be burned, don't forget your safety checklist. A week or more ahead of time, you should notify your neighbors, your fire department, local law enforcement officials, and your district forester. Alerting everyone in advance will save them from undue concern. 
At the same time, if a problem develops, help may be able to arrive more quickly. You should be checking the burn conditions well in advance. Make sure it's still going to be in good condition to carry fire. Snow and ice can flatten light fuels. As the date nears, pay special attention to weather. You can check with your district forester or your NOAA weather report or local forecast of the day before the burn. On the morning of the burn, check again for an updated forecast. Don't rely on the previous night's forecast from radio or TV. Weather is the most important factor in a safe burn. Here's what you should keep in mind when it comes to weather. Be aware of wind speed and direction. 5 to 15 mile an hour wind speed is best. And remember that wind speed increases toward midday and decreases near sunset. The wind should carry smoke away from roads, power lines, homes, and public buildings. It should blow in the direction of natural barriers and fire breaks. Relative humidity is very important during a prescribed burn. 30 to 60 percent is ideal for grass burns. Fires become difficult to control as humidity declines. Air temperatures of 60 to 70 degrees are ideal. The warmer and drier the air is, the more hazardous the conditions are for burning. If the weather isn't right, postpone the burn. Don't be tempted to burn at night or into the dark. It's too dangerous for the crew, and the cooling temperatures create smoke hazards. If the weather's right and the equipment is in good working order, you've only one item left on your safety checklist. And that's to be sure your crew knows what to do. Brief them all on the burn plan. Designate who's in charge and what each person's responsibility is. In the case of fire escapes and emergencies, know what each person should do. Now you're ready to begin the prescribed fire. Begin in a downwind corner. Start a small test fire to check fire behavior and the crew's performance. If something doesn't seem quite right, stop everything until the problem is solved. If everything is working, continue lighting the backfire in short segments. By beginning at the downwind side of the area, you'll allow the fire to move slowly, backing against the wind. This will create a burned area to broaden the fire break. Burn only as much as the crew can watch and control. The person lighting the fire should keep an eye on the way both fire and the crew are responding. Don't let the fire line get beyond the reach of the sprayer hoses. Watch for changes in the weather and adjust your work as needed. Once the backfires have been successfully lit, begin flank firing by working up the sides of the field, with one crew working their way up each side. Watch out for draws. If you come to a draw, stabilize your line. Assemble a crew to establish a hand line across it. Then dispatch the spray equipment to the other side to maintain control while crossing and once across. Have the crews work towards the upwind edge of the field to encircle it. The fire now becomes a head fire, which will be carried with the wind toward the initial backfire. This head fire will quickly and effectively burn surface plant growth. Once you've burned the field, Check the perimeter at least twice to be sure that there's nothing burning outside the fire break. Watch for cow chips, tree limbs, fence posts, leaves, which may be smoldering near the burn borders. A little wind later could blow sparks from them across the fire break into unburned fuels. To prevent that, move the debris well inside the burn perimeter. Once it's all finished, let those you notified earlier know that you're done. That way, if an accidental fire occurs, they'll be prepared to respond. After a while, you'll be able to watch the results of your burn. New grass and forbs should appear when weather warms. Forbs and native warm season grasses should produce more flower stalks throughout the summer. Invading small cedars were likely killed. Some deciduous trees and shrubs were controlled. In the end, you'll have healthier stands of warm season grasses and better cover for quail and other birds.